Hello, and welcome to the Cottonwood Classical Respective Family Information Night. This is our second of two nights, and it's going to be a bit different than normal. We would really much rather have you in our campus, but of course, this school year is not like a typical school year, so uh, this was the best we could do. Uh, while we are mostly remote at this time, just like every other middle and high school in the state, uh, we're going to treat this evening as if we were looking at a normal school year. So. That's the approach we're taking with, with all of the elements this evening. Uh, we are streaming live on YouTube, so please use the chat to ask any questions you have. They're being monitored and moderated, so some will be answered over the, the course of the video in the chat, and then others we will save for the Q&A se session at the end. So again, at any time, feel free to put uh, any questions you have in the chat. To get us started, we are going to show a school tour video to give you a feel of, of what it's like on our campus. Hello, and welcome to Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School. In a typical year, we would have you on campus and we would give you a tour and answer questions in the moment. But of course, this is a school year unlike any other. So we're gonna do the closest thing we can, which is a nice virtual video tour, show you around, let you in on some secrets, uh, and then answer any questions that we can after you've seen the video. So first, this is the front of the building. Right along Jefferson Street, our visitor entrance and parent entrance during the day. So if you need to sign out a ch sick child or go to an appointment or something like that, this is where you would come. It's also where you can visit our attendance secretary and main receptionist. This is the student entrance. So every morning when you drop your child off and afternoon when you pick them up at the end of the day, this is where they'll get out of your vehicle and enter the building. If they ride the bus, they'll actually enter and exit on the other side of the building. So when I get a little tired of walking those stuffy halls indoors, I can come out here and have fun with my friends here. We're uh, expanding our parking lot, and as you can see, not much is done yet, but when it's completed, we'll have about 15 additional parking spaces and student parking. We'll have a couple of electric car chargers. Uh, we'll have 150 new feet of fencing, additional landscaping, gates, bus egress, and a far safer system for drop off and pick up. And we're really excited to give our students more space uh, and a safer campus for everybody. This is the back of the building. I know it doesn't look like much. Where I'm standing is the lunch recess area for students to run around and play a little bit of basketball. But in the near future, it's the home of a full-size gymnasium, black box theater, music suite, and additional classroom space. While the project is currently only in the capital campaign and construction drawings phase, uh, we're confident that your child will benefit from its existence in the very near future. Welcome to one of my favorite places in the building, the trophy case. It's reflective of our student achievements over the years. And in this case, you will see athletic and academic achievements spread across all kinds of different activities, from cross country and volleyball, to science Olympiad, mock trial, and speech and debate. There's been a lot of achievements over the years. Our students have tremendous support in these areas. We're very proud to be a AAA NMAA school uh, and compete at that level. For a full list of activities and athletics offered at Cottonwood Classical, check out our website. Welcome to the student lobby. It's the main point of egress at the start and end of every day, and it's also the student's space. It's a, a large area, there's a book exchange, uh, there's artwork, and there's also a banner for Rachel's Challenge that most of our students signed last year. It's part of an anti-bullying campaign. In terms of the school bell schedule, Students come to school at 7.35, and the school day ends at 3 o'clock, from Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, school ends before 2 o'clock. On Mondays through Wednesdays, students follow a traditional schedule, and on Thursdays and Fridays, they follow a block schedule. For Thursdays and Fridays, students get to attend advisory and also community time, in which they get to um, gain uh, social emotional support. In terms of the state policy on um, enrollment of siblings, um, for students who have siblings at CCPS, they can be automatically enrolled at the school. Cottonwood Classical has a vibrant arts program. Starting in sixth grade and then going on through seventh grade, students take a semester of art and a semester of guitar. In eighth grade, students have the ability to take a drama class or an additional guitar class. And in high school, our students take the IB arts classes, um, which can include a visual arts class, um, a music class, or a drama class. Um, our students 
are taught using um, artistic behavior protocol. And so with that, students um, are analyzing their own art and the work of other people, as well as creating art. Welcome to the gym. This is the home of our physical education program. We have PE in grades six, seven, and nine. And this is also where we do a lot of our after school practices for athletics. During the day, you can also sometimes find a large gathering in here for a grade level meeting or division meeting. And we proctor our IB exams every May in this space. In the near future, when the phase one edition is complete, we hope to turn this into a cafeteria, which we're all really excited about. Here I'm standing in front of the lockers for both middle school and also high school students. In their lockers, they can store textbooks related to math and science. For our middle school students, the curriculum that they use for math and science aligns with state standards, but the curriculum also helps them uh, prepare for a highly rigorous IB um, math and science program. In our IB science program, we have courses that deals with physics, biology, and also ESS as well. For our math program, we have AI and also AA, standard level and also high level. Students have two lunch periods at Cottonwood Classical. There's a middle school lunch period and a high school lunch period. Students, um, families can order lunch from our PTO. They can order from restaurants such as Chick-fil-A, Dion's, and Twister's, and they pick up their food at this window. If students choose to bring their food from home, there's access to refrigerators and microwaves. So I'm currently sitting in our cafeteria um, beside the mural that acknowledges our previous time when our school was housed at the Unser Museum. Um, we are going to have this current cafeteria become the library um, when phase one of construction is um, completed. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our school's behavioral program and it's called the IB Learner Profile Traits. And there are several traits that we work very hard to develop in our students. Um, traits such as becoming excellent thinkers, becoming knowledgeable, becoming caring, open-minded, principled. Um, these traits we acknowledge as the best way that we can behave um, as people, and we want that for our students at Cottonwood. Right now I'm standing inside the nurse's office where students can come during the day if they feel sick. Adjacent to the nurse's office is the rapid response room, which serves as a place where students can be isolated when a nurse is helping out with another student. In compliance with uh, the COVID safety protocol, each part of our building has an atomizer that allows fresh air to come in. Every room that we have allows air to be changed uh, at least five times per hour. And also, the filters that we use currently are comparable with the filters that are used in hospitals. I'm standing here in what we call our senior lounge to talk to you about humanities and world languages at Gottman Classical. So for world languages, students take Spanish every year in grades 8, 9, and 10. And then in 11th and 12th grade, as part of the IB diploma program, they can select to take two more years of Spanish and graduate relatively fluent in the language. Or they can switch over to French and gain some competency and confidence in a second or really third language. In the humanities, Cottonwood is proud to be among the top schools in the state every year for English language arts standards on the state accountability test. And when students reach 11th and 12th grade, they get to select from options such as philosophy, psychology, world history, and environmental systems and societies. Finally, uh, as also part of the 11th and 12th grade IB core program, students take something called theory of knowledge, which is an epistemological view of knowledge and how we know what we know. It's a really wonderful course to reflect on all that they've learned in their time at Cottonwood and prepare themselves cognitively for what is to come at college. In addition to being an International Baccalaureate World School, one of the amazing things about Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School is our Paideia Pedagogy. It's a key part of our mission, and it informs everything we do in the classroom. Essentially, there are three components. There's the didactic component to teaching, which is lecture, and that's meant to take up as little time as possible. The other two areas are intellectual coaching, and seminars, which many of our students lovingly call Socratics, because there can be a Socratic style to a seminar. 
as you can see here uh, in a seminar, students are sitting around the table with the teacher and they're discussing openly interpretive questions and providing evidence from the text. It's a really amazing thing to behold and it's part of what helps our students grow as citizens of their school and of the world. Here at the end of the video, I wanted to share some recognition we've rece received recently. U.S. News rated us as one of the top 250 high schools in the country among all publicly funded schools, which is really a, a wonderful achievement for us. In addition, Niche.com rated us as the number one charter school in all of New Mexico for middle school and for high school. In addition to all of the phenomenal teachers that we have here and our dedicated students, parent support has been a big part of our success. So we welcome you to learn more about our parent groups on the website and hope that when, you join, when your student joins us, that you really join us as well. Thanks for making it all the way through this video. We hope to meet you in person soon. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video tour of our school uh, and got to have a little bit of a feel for, um, for what it looks like on our campus behind the scenes. And we'll talk in some more detail about the things you saw in that video as we go through the presentation. So the first thing I wanted to mention is the, the agenda for this evening so that you understand that you don't necessarily need to be here for two hours. Uh, we broadcast it at 6 to 8 to make sure that you uh, scheduled that time so that if you wanted to stay for all the Q&A that you would have sufficient time to ask, ask those questions. So for the next uh, about you know 35 or 40 minutes, we're going to talk a lot about the school, where it, how it started, what is really important to us, and where it's headed. And then you'll get some details on our application process and the lottery. And then uh, we'll do Q&A. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Q&A is going to be some curated questions from the chat. So continue to use that chat feature throughout. Uh, no question is a bad question, truly. OK, so history of the school. It was uh, approved as a, as a charter in 2006 and then opened its doors in August of 2008 with 121 students and eight teachers. And I am proud to be among those eight teachers who was working behind the Unser Racing Museum campus, which is the reason for that picture there, uh, in a very small, not even 5,000 square foot building when we, we first started. Very intimate setting. So why did they start Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School? What was the purpose? Uh, there, there are a lot of reasons, and it would, it would really take one of the lens here to uh, to explain it all, but the two I'm going to focus on are the become the first publicly funded Ivy World School with the diploma program in New Mexico. So we had United World College up in Las Vegas, uh, but that's privately funded. And then to produce engaged citizens who are lifelong learners, and the Paideia method was chosen for that, which I'll talk about both of these elements. Paideia method is core to what we do, and if, when someone asks me the number one reason that I believe Cottonwood is so successful, I always say this before I be because this is the day-to-day -day lifeblood of the school, the interactions between students and teachers. So it, there's three components. The first is the didactic instruction or lecture, which we're doing a lot of this evening, but normally would try to restrict to no more than 20% of a class period. Um, students are capable of doing an awful lot on their own without the teacher telling them how to do it. And then 40 to 70 percent intellectual coaching and coached projects. So that's a lot of students working, the teachers, the guide on the side, rather than the sage on the stage, and, and really coaching them through things and asking them questions to, to clarify what they're doing. And then seminars, which are sort of the crown jewel of, of the Paideia program. And that's where you um, would see students formulating their own ideas to answer interpretive questions using the text in front of them. And the exact percentage is really varied by grade level and subject area. For example, in a math class, you might see a little bit more didactic instruction and a lot of intellectual coaching with pretty infrequent seminars, uh, though they do happen. So a little more on the seminar. You can read that quote, but I, I wanted to hone in on that photo at the bottom. So that's Dr. Janice, Denise Junopoulos, our longest tenured teacher here at Cottonwood Classical. She and I started together and even taught PE together in that first year. Uh, you can see her there with a group of seniors in IB English Literature, HL, discussing a text that they're reading. Um, and a really good seminar 
that you would walk into, you would see the teacher ask a question to get it started and then not speak again for the rest of the seminar because the students really carry it and they know the rules and they know how to uh, use what their, their peer has said and build on it, ask clarifying questions. This, this is uh, now the IB uh, diploma program, which is the program we have. International Baccalaureate itself is a, a large organization. It's global, as the name implies, and it's been around since the 1960s. Uh, so there are some, some reasons listed there that you might prefer to have, like the diploma program over, for example, AP or just your typical dual enrollment or dual credit kind of thing. Um, I would hone in on number six as my favorite there. The critical thinking that you get from this program is beyond any other program I've seen in secondary schools. And this gives you a bit more detail for the diploma program itself. It is only in 11th and 12th grade, so from 6th grade through 10th grade, we're building a lot of those uh, skills and habits for students and helping them be prepared for their uh, IB diploma program courses. The gist of it is that you take, if you're full diploma, you take six courses in the different subjects listed there, starting at the top with studies in language and literature, and you can kind of go around the, around the circle. And then what is core to the program is that theory of knowledge, extended essay, and creativity, activity, and service. Extended essay is a 4,000 word university level research paper that is uh, the original work of a high schooler. Theory of knowledge is a, is a course that's seminar-based, where students discuss uh, epistemological I ideas, like what is art, how do I know when I've encountered it, or is it ethical, or what are the ethical implications of implanting a microchip in someone under someone's skin? Um, just a couple ideas. And every student does that course, every student writes an extended essay, and then every student participates in CAS, which is sort of that community-focused part of it. So activity, literally getting your heart pumping. Uh, creativity, so that could be expressing yourself through art and music, or it could be through engineering design. And then service is what it sounds like, service to your school and then service to the community outside of your school. And then the, the thing that's sort of the, the lifeblood through the, the NEIB World School is the learner profile. So these are the 10 traits that we look for every student to grow in. Uh, and to respond to inside and outside of the, the classroom. And uh, we're going to show a little bit of a video on IB that will hit on some more of these ideas. For over 40 years, an international baccalaureate education has been helping people cross the boundaries that separate languages, countries, and cultures. Today, the IB continues that tradition, providing a continuum of international education that features four high-quality programs for students from 3 to 19 years old. In a rapidly changing world, IB programs aim to develop intercultural understanding and respect, a mission reflected in 10 core values. The IB Learner Profile describes the attributes of people who are empowered to help create a better and more peaceful world. As IB learners, we strive to be inquirers, curious, enthusiastic, lifelong learners who ask powerful questions, knowledgeable, exploring locally and globally significant ideas, thinkers, critical, creative, ethical decision makers, communicators, Good listeners, confident in more than one language. Principled, honest, fair, and responsible. Open-minded, developing critical appreciation for our own cultures and the cultures of others. Caring, committed to service with the community. Risk takers, courageous, resourceful, and resilient. Balanced, focused on well-being for ourselves and those around us. Reflective, thoughtful, realistic, and hopeful for the future. At the heart of an IB education are passionate, lifelong learners who believe that how you learn and why you're learning is as important as what you study in school. Students are at the center of IB programs, internationally-minded people 
who recognized their common humanity and shared guardianship of the planet. An IB education means opportunities to develop healthy relationships, imagination, and ethical reasoning. It means building the confidence and persistence students need to achieve challenging goals. It means learning what it is to be human and how to thrive in a complex world. IB learners work together to turn experience into understanding. As they learn how to learn and how to manage their own learning, IB students are supported by assessment, a variety of strategies through which teachers help them understand how they're doing and how they can keep doing better. An IB education helps students build understanding through inquiry, action, and reflection. Students learn by doing, connecting the classroom with the world beyond. IB programs culminate in exhibitions, projects, and independent research that demonstrate not only what students know, but also what they can do. An IB education creates learning communities in which students can increase their understanding of language and culture and which can help them to become more globally engaged. Through IB programs, students explore how to face both local and global challenges that involve the environment, development, conflict, rights, cooperation, and governance. The IB's courses and curriculum frameworks are engaging, relevant, challenging, and significant. In IB programs, students learn content that is worth knowing and that can help them make a difference. An IB education spans traditional academic disciplines and pushes students to make connections across many fields of study. IB programs are broad and balanced, conceptual and connected. Their rigorous models of assessment have earned widespread respect, including recognition of the IB diploma as an international university entrance qualification. The IB represents an independent worldwide community of educators who are committed to excellence. Thousands of creative IB world schools collaborate to connect high ideals with the day-to-day -day details of teaching and learning. They hold each other mutually accountable to standards and practices that define high-quality educational programs. What makes an IB education unique? Alumni, educators, supporters, and more than a million students and their families every year working together to make a better world through education. Hello, I'm Carissa Petrie, the Director of Student, Family, and Teacher Engagement and Support. And I'm going to talk to you about what daily life looks like for our students at Cottonwood. So our bell schedule is fairly similar for our middle school and our high school students. Um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, our students have um, all of their classes. Um, if you'll notice, um, the extended PP is an extended passing period. So there's, there's a little bit more time in the morning um, for a snack or to run to the restroom. Um, and our middle school lunch um, is from 11.36 to 12.10. Our high school lunch is just right after that. So um, the lunches are around, around the noon hour. Um, our students have um, what's called a rotating study hall. So um, during the day, they have one period where they have time to study um, with a teacher who, who proctors the class. On Thursdays and Friday, our students have block periods. And during that time, um, students can um, have seminars in their classes. They can work on projects. Um, there's group work. And sometimes teachers have tests scheduled, but they have a little bit of extra time on um, those days. And then just notice that on Fridays, um, six period ends at 125, and then our students are released. So they do get out early on Fridays. The expectations that we have for our Cottonwood staff is that um, they are putting our students first. So our students are always first with the staff. Um, we always look and see what we can do to improve life for our students. Um, mission strong communication. So what that means is that 
um, we're, we're communicating with our students and with our families all the time, but also um, our staff is teaching our students um, through seminars and, um, and discussions in class how to be better communicators. And then there's that growth mindset. How do we, how do we look at a problem or an issue or something that we haven't mastered yet? And how do we think, how can I get there? Um, and so our staff is always working with our students to practice that growth mindset. And staff have growth mindset too. We have staff that is always um, in professional development. We have staff that are um, still you know, working on master's degrees or PhDs. So our staff is, is also practicing that growth mindset. Our Cottonwood students, um, they are practicing the IB learner profile traits in their behavior. Um, so they're caring, they're thoughtful. Um, we're practicing strong communication. So again, they are learning in their classes how to communicate in an effective and professional way. And they do that with discussions and seminars. And then students are practicing growth mindset. So when will I get there? Can I add yet at the end of, of that sentence? Um, when will I be there? Um, when, when, will, when will I be good at algebra one, um, you know, it will, it will happen in the future. You just have to have that growth mindset. Um, our Cottonwood parents, so we have wonderful parents at Cottonwood, um, and we want our parents to reach out to us if there's an issue, and we'll reach out to, to parents if there's an issue, um, that they support their students and um, send students to school that are ready to learn and ready to engage with other people and that they partner with our staff um, to help their students become the best learners and people that they can be. So at Cottonwood, we are a prep school and we do have um, a polo with the Cottonwood insignia that all of our students wear. So these are two of our um, students that have graduated, but they have on our Cottonwood polos and um, our students wear their polos Monday through Thursday. Um, and most types of um, pants and skirts and shorts are acceptable um, if, they're, if they're not torn or if they're um, long enough for skirts and shorts. Um, and different hairstyles are accepted, different types of shoes. Um, and they just have to be professional in nature because we are a prep school. On Fridays, our students are encouraged to wear their CCPS um, spirit gear. So that sports gear or club gear um, or university gear and so you can show your your aspirations to where you might want to go to college our expectations for student behavior is that students are abiding by the um, IB learner profile traits so all of those traits that were learners that were caring that were principled um, those are the IB learner profile traits um, that we're trying to instill in our students um, the golden rule, so we expect um, our students to do unto others as they would have done unto them. Um, our restorative practices, so if there is a behavioral issue and um, there's some ramifications for that, we want to have our students um, ask themselves, how can I improve this situation? So that's the restorative part of this, um, of that situation. And then safe, consistent learning environment. So. Um, our teachers are, are really reliable and um, they want our students to feel comfortable in their environment. Um, our staff wants everybody, um, all of our students to feel like this is their home. And so if something is amiss, um, students are always welcome to, to talk to an adult about it and, um, and, have, and have a little bit of support that way. So last year, um, our student body participated in um, Rachel's Challenge. And let me tell you a little bit about Rachel's Challenge. So Rachel was um, one of the students that was killed in the Columbine High School shooting um, in the late 90s. And um, Rachel's parents, um, after she passed away, they um, found her, her diaries and her journals. And she had all of these, she had all of these wonderful thoughts about um, how students can can be kind to each other and how we can treat each other well um, and how we can be good friends to each other and um, so Rachel's challenge was born out of those journals and um, it's an anti-bullying 
um, challenge. And so um, these are the tenants of Rachel's challenge. Uh, last year, our students, um, we actually went on a field trip. Our middle school students went, and then our high school students went later in the day and um, listened to a presentation about Rachel's challenge. And our students really bought into um, the anti-bullying message and signed a pledge. Um, and we have a big um, poster in our student entrance with all of our student signatures, um, just kind of affirming that they agree to those, to those tenants of Rachel's challenge. So particularly our younger students are really excited about lockers. So let me tell you about our lockers. So every student does get a locker and they do look like the lockers in the picture. Um, and just so you know, you do not have to have a locker. If you prefer to carry your things around with you, you can always do that. Um, some students put locks on their lockers, other students don't, that's up to you. Um, I have, as, as an employee of the school for many years, I have never heard of things being stolen out of kids' lockers. So there's lots of trust in our community. And you are welcome to decorate your locker. So there's little chandeliers that you can buy or little carpets. Um, there's um, organizers for the locker. You are welcome to decorate your locker um, just within reason. So just keep in mind that you can't paint your locker either the inside or the outside or use permanent marker on it. But you are welcome to decorate it and make it yours. So we have an accelerated curriculum at Cottonwood and in sixth and seventh grade, our students are taking um, an accelerated math class. Um, more specifically in seventh grade, we call that class pre-algebra because in eighth grade, our students take um, formal high school algebra. In sixth and seventh grade, our students are taking a technology um, class, a semester of guitar, a semester of PE, and a semest semester of visual arts. So and that's through sixth and seventh grade. So when our students come into Cottonwood after eighth grade, there may be some um, high school classes that they need to take to catch up with some of the high school classes that our eighth graders have taken. So if you are accepted to Cottonwood and you're coming in after eighth grade, you will um, need to do a credit check with our registrar, uh, Miss Geertz, and she'll let you know exactly what classes you need to take and um, sign you up for our um, credit recovery classes that are online. We have lots of wonderful activities at Cottonwood. Um, we have student government, we have science Olympiad, yearbook, guitar, social action club, um, the spotlight. And we also have athletics. We have golf, cross country, basketball, volleyball, swimming, water polo, track and field, and soccer. And then that last bullet point, custom. So based on the interest of students, students can approach um, faculty members and ask them to sponsor a club. So. For example, this year we were able to bring in a chess master um, to, to teach kids um, about the ins and outs of chess and to help them participate in some competitions. Um, I know that we have a baking club. Um, we have our, our sixth graders this year wanted to have a drama club and they are putting on a play um, as, as I speak. I know that they have um, a play that they are preparing for. Um, and so. Part of, part of what's wonderful about the Cottonwood community is that you can indulge your interest with these after-school clubs and there will be some, some faculty member that will help you um, with organizing that club. So I talked a little bit about the schedule for study hall, but once a week we do have um, what's called advisory. And during advisory, our students get a grade check. And so every week teachers are checking grades and seeing if they need to communicate with families um, if, there's any, if there's any kind of issues with grades. Um, but also during this time, uh, we do what's called SEL, Social Emotional Learning. Um, and that's a kind of programming that focuses on mindfulness and skill building. And the types of skills that we are building in this case are emotional skills. So how, how do you handle stress? Um, how do you handle disappointment? Um, and so there's, there's, different, there's different types of lessons for how we handle those types of issues. And, and sometimes it's helpful to have that kind of direct, um, that direct kind of teaching of, you know, what do I do if this happens? Or what do I do if that happens? And so that would happen during advisory. 
So four days a, or four days a week. So even on the block day, um, because of those rotating study halls, um, there is time um, built into the schedule for studying. And so, and so you have every uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. There's a study hall, and then just depending on your schedule, you'll have a study hall built in on Thursday or Friday. For our SEL supports, um, we have advisory, like I just talked about. Um, our school counselor, so the, the top picture is um, Ms. Stafford, our school counselor. And then the bottom right picture is our social worker, um, Ms. Garnand. We have natural helpers, which is a student um, support for other students. And then we have some focused clubs that are um, that are supportive of social emotional learning. So we have um, the Gay Straight Alliance, we have RAPS, we have Friends of Rachel. And if you haven't heard of um, RAPS before, it's really an interesting um, club. So they actually collect data on risky behavior and um, just the mental well-being of the students in the school. And then they analyze that um, data and they work with um, our counselor and our social worker and usually a, a teacher or two to figure out how those behaviors uh, can be improved in the school environment. Okay, so Cottonwood is a charter school. We are publicly funded and we have a special education program and it's a full special education program. So we have integrated classrooms. So everybody um, is, is mainstreamed in all of the classroom environments. Um, our IEPs by definition are individualized. So they are individual to what our students need. And we also have gifted IEPs. So um, if you have a gifted IEP, um, we honor that at Cottonwood. So the registration process for incoming students um, is that this year you will upload your most recent IEP. So if you get into Cottonwood, you're gonna upload that most recent IEP when you register. And then you're gonna also upload the last um, reevaluation or initial evaluation from your previous school. And that just helps our special um, ed director to get you um, into, into your um, into your classes and um, your accommodations or modifications in place a lot quicker. So if you are uh, currently, if your student is currently in the SAP process or some schools are have moved already to calling it the um, MLSS process, um, then you will, um, if you're in tier two or tier three, you're gonna also be submitting your paperwork um, through the registration process. Um, but Cottonwood honors um, the SAP paperwork and we will um, make sure that students have the support they need um, and that teachers are working with students um, so that they can be successful in school. Um, we have um, targeted interventions um, with our subject specific teachers. So if students seem to have um, some work that they need to do in their classes um, to improve their performance, we'll schedule them in a targeted intervention and, um, and they'll work with those teachers um, during their study hall. And then we have 504 plans. So if you have a current 504 plan, you're gonna upload that during the registration period as well. And, um, and then we'll get you in for a meeting so that we can update your 504. Okay, thank you. And on to the future at CCPS. All right, I am back to talk to you about the near and distant future at CCPS and we referenced it a little bit in the video, so just I'm going to take it a little bit further. So right now, uh, as you saw, we're expanding fencing and gates on our campus uh, and landscaping for security as well, actually. There's going to be a new egress for buses to get them out of the parent drop-off line. Uh, we're improving the parent drop-off process to give more space on campus and keep it one way, which is a lot safer. Uh, we're adding a couple of electric car chargers and we're doing some work on our campus to prepare for August because as we know, um, 
that's when we, we definitely would expect all of our students back on campus. Later in this calendar year 2021, we're looking to break ground on phase one of our facilities master plan, which includes the things listed there, a full-size high school gym, a black box theater, a cafeteria that can actually fit a sizable chunk of the students at lunch, a, a library that's adequately sized, a music suite, a health office, and some additional classroom space. Right now, we, we, um, we know that a lot of our classrooms are smaller than we'd like them to be. Uh, just the popularity of the school and the size of the, the building we have. And then in 2022 and beyond, we'd be looking to complete phase one, uh, add a multi-purpose field, and some additional community space around campus, and then hopefully at some point, a separate sort of uh, sciences or STEM type building. So th that's where we are and where we're headed. I know a lot of, um, a lot of charter schools struggle with facilities and, and they can really help to catalyze the mission of the school. So we know that this is really important. Here's just a, a look at phase one. So that top part above the dotted line is our e existing building. And those highlighted blue areas are places in the existing building that we're gonna be making some changes. So our existing cafeteria would become a library, and then we're adding a full-size tech lab, a cafeteria, et cetera. And then you can see the gym, black box theater, classroom space, et cetera, down there at the bottom. Uh, things that we'll be adding in phase one later this year. Uh, and then I, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about other support groups that are essential to our success at Cottonwood Classical and, and do involve parents. So the first is the foundation and the, our capital campaign that's just launching now. Our foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that helps the school manage its campus and look at long-term strategic finances. And so right now they're working on the capital campaign to raise funds to complete phase one of the facilities master plan. Our parent-teacher organization is really the boots on the ground support from, from parents. They are here almost every day, helping with the lunch program, uh, helping teachers with, with little things that they're working on, and being available uh, as perpetual volunteers for so many different supports for our school. We really appreciate them tremendously. And then our, our Parent Advisory Council, which is um, a group that looks at policies and has a member on the governing council, they help us with some communications with parents, help to recruit parents for strategic planning uh, purposes and, and things of that sort. All right, so now uh, the moment you've been waiting for, we're gonna talk about application lottery, waitlist and process with Ms. Jackie Geertz, our registrar. Hi, I'm Jackie Geertz and I'm the registrar here at Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School. And I'm gonna go through the lottery dates and how the lottery will work with you. On February 1st at 9 a.m., the link on our website will become live. That link is gonna be located under the admissions tab and then you click on lottery or it will also be available on the very front page of the website. So you can go to either spot to find the live link. It will close on February 26th at 4 p.m. So you have a good chunk of time to get your application placed um, for the lottery. You will need to place an application for each child that is going to be eligible to attend in 21-22 school year. Once you submit the application, you will receive a confirmation and you can also print your application so that you have it. If you do not receive a confirmation email, we ask that you please check your spam and trash 
and folders before sending an email to us at ccps.lottery at cottonwoodclassical.org to verify receipt. Please only complete one application per eligible student. If you put in multiple applications, we will delete all but one. Your application does guarantee your student to be placed in the lottery. And on April 2nd at 4 p.m., we take all of our applications and we place them all into the lottery system and we will do a randomized lottery and it will then um, pull for the lottery those applicants that are the recipients that are going to be pulled and then anybody that is not pulled on that day as a recipient they will be placed on a wait list you will be notified no later than end of day April 6th um, where your child stands whether they were pulled in the lottery or where they stand on the wait list Remember for the application, some of the most important things is make sure that your phone numbers and emails that you place on your application are phone numbers and emails that will be active seven days a week, 365 days a year, um, so that we can always send you information through those. Any wait lists, when we pull off the wait list, they're going to be going to that same email address. So make sure your email address is one that you can access um, all week long. A lot of people will put their work email. They can't access it on the weekend. We pull somebody off the wait list on Friday. Then you don't know until Monday, and it may be too late once we get very close to the start of school. So make sure that you can always access your email addresses seven days a week. One of the big questions everybody asks is, how many spots do you have? Number of spots are determined after we receive our current student intent to return and current student eligible sibling information. Uh, siblings of current students do are given priority and do not have to go through the lottery. So we do need to know how many eligible students there will be before we can figure out our spots. So we will run the intent to return eligible sibling information the same time that we're looking at running the lottery application process. So we have our accurate numbers by the time we run the lottery on April 2nd. So we really do not know how many spots we will have. We do honor the state sibling policy and basically what that means is that if you put three children in the lottery one child gets pulled and the other two do not as long as those two children have a current application for this year's lottery um, placed with Cottonwood we will pull those siblings and move them up to the top of the wait list so that as soon as we have a space available, they will be pulled in. So just make sure that every child eligible to attend Cottonwood for next year, you have put an application in for. Um, also, just always remember, we continue to pull off the wait list all the way through October, typically, or to the beginning of October, actually. So we pull all summer. Every time we find that we have a seat available, we will be pulling off the wait list. So you need to just all summer long and right into the school year be watching your emails so that you don't miss anything. If your child does not get pulled in the lottery this year or your child gets pulled in the lottery and you decline the seat, you will have to put your child place your child again in the lottery next year. That's one of the big questions. Do we have to place in the lottery every year? Yes, if you have not accepted the spot. If you accept the spot and become a current student at Cottonwood, you do not have to go through the lottery again. The big thing is through all of this process, if you have any problems, concerns, questions, um, please don't call the school. Email us at ccps.lottery at cottonwoodclassical.org and we will get back to you um, within two business days 
and we will get back to you much quicker through email than if you try to call the school. So again, February 1st, 9 a.m., link will open. February 26th at 4 p.m., the link will close. The lottery will be run on April 2nd at 4 p.m., and I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so that concludes the presentation part of the program. And now uh, for Q&A, I can see that we've answered some questions in the chat. I'd be happy to answer additional questions if you put them in there. But first, I'll, I will repeat uh, what was already said. If you have questions about the application or lottery at any time, you can email ccps.lottery at cottonwoodclassical.org. If you have questions about the program or anything else, you can, info, you can email info at cottonwoodclassical.org, and that will be forwarded to somebody who can, who can answer your question. So we'll uh, wait a moment here and see if we have any other, any other questions about the program, about grade levels, about the lottery process, really anything. Looks like there's no more questions. That's how well we did. Very thorough. So, uh, what we'll do? Oh no, I see one. I see one. There you go. All right. What are the clubs that students can join? What time would they take place? Uh, so Mrs. Petrie showed a, a sampling earlier of, of some clubs. It's hard to say uh, year over year because we do involve the student input in determining what clubs will be offered in a typical year. So from the New Mexico Athletics and Activities Association, we have mock trial, speech and debate, science Olympiad, uh, eSports, and I think I'm, I'm forgetting at least one. But then for other clubs, uh, it, can, it really can vary depending on the student interest. So we do have an orchestra club that tends to, to happen every year. We have choirs that happen every year, and then uh, like baking and Dungeons and Dragons and all kinds of things that students are just interested in and they have a teacher that is willing to spend some time with them doing it. Uh, we also have 11th and 12th grade students that as part of their CAS work, uh, they might completely run a club and the teacher is really just the, the, the background support for them. So those kinds of clubs, they, they mostly happen at lunch and after school. Um, and I would say on average once a week, unless they are an NMAA activity, and, and then they would meet more frequently. Uh, typing class, so we do in the sixth and seventh grade technology, which is uh, the fall semester of sixth grade and spring semester of seventh grade. A part of that class does involve typing. Uh, we know that we get students in sixth grade who are already expert typers, and we get students who are still doing a, a lot of hunting and pecking and moving pretty slowly. So we do try to normalize that a little bit to, to help them be set up for success with typing on OSS. Uh, is there a PE class for 11th and 12th grade? Not, not exactly. Um, we, do have, we do have athletics, we have sports. So uh, volleyball, cross country, track and field, basketball, swimming, water polo, golf, soccer. We've got all of those sports. Um, but PE we have in grades six, seven, and, and nine. Um, so that's where we where we have PE classes, and I'm going to let the the sibling of a CCPS student does not enter the lottery. Uh, I'm going to let one of our registration folks respond to that question in the chat um, to make sure that it, it stays there because we know that'll be a, a common question. Okay. Any other questions about anything about our program or campus? So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, roll the, the tour video again. And um, while the tour video is, is running, it's a, a little under 10 minutes. 
You can continue to ask questions in the chat, and we'll answer them in the chat. Once the video is over, uh, we will we will close this out and put a recording of tonight's event or last night's event. We've done it twice on our website, along with this school tour video, so that you can come back and review this information. Again, thank you very much for joining us. Have a good night. Hello, and welcome to Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School. In a typical year, we would have you on campus, and we would give you a tour and answer questions in the moment. But of course, this is a school year unlike any other. So we're going to do the closest thing we can, which is a nice virtual video tour, show you around, let you in on some secrets, uh, and then answer any questions that we can after you've seen the video. So first, this is the front of the building, right along Jefferson Street, our visitor entrance and parent entrance during the day. So if you need to sign out a ch sick child or go to an appointment or something like that, this is where you would come. It's also where you can visit our attendance secretary and main receptionist. This is the student entrance, so every morning when you drop your child off and afternoon when you pick them up at the end of the day, this is where they'll get out of your vehicle and enter the building. If they ride the bus, they'll actually enter and exit on the other side of the building. So when I get a little tired of walking those stuffy halls indoors, I can come out here and have fun with my friends here. We're uh, expanding our parking lot, and as you can see, not much is done yet, but when it's completed, we'll have about 15 additional parking spaces and student parking. We'll have a couple of electric car chargers. Uh, we'll have 150 new feet of fencing, additional landscaping, gates, bus egress, and a far safer system for drop-off and pick-up. And we're really excited to give our students more space uh, and a safer campus for everybody. This is the back of the building. I know it doesn't look like much. Where I'm standing is the lunch recess area for students to run around and play a little bit of basketball. But in the near future, it's the home of a full-size gymnasium, black box theater, music suite, and additional classroom space. While the project is currently only in the capital campaign and construction drawings phase, uh, we're confident that your child will benefit from its existence in the very near future. Welcome to one of my favorite places in the building, the trophy case. It's reflective of our student achievements over the years. And in this case, you will see athletic and academic achievements spread across all kinds of different activities, from cross country and volleyball, to science Olympiad, mock trial, and speech and debate. There's been a lot of achievements over the years. Our students have tremendous support in these areas. We're very proud to be a AAA NMAA school uh, and compete at that level. For a full list of activities and athletics offered at Cottonwood Classical, check out our website. Welcome to the student lobby. It's the main point of egress at the start and end of every day, and it's also the student's space. It's a, a large area, there's a book exchange, uh, there's artwork, and there's also a banner for Rachel's challenge that most of our students signed last year. It's part of an anti-bullying campaign. In terms of the school bell schedule, students come to school at 7.35 and the school day ends at 3 o'clock from Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, school ends before 2 o'clock. On Mondays through Wednesdays, students follow a traditional schedule and on Thursdays and Fridays, they follow a block schedule. For Thursdays and Fridays, students get to attend advisory and also community time in which they get to um, gain uh, social emotional support. In terms of the state policy on um, enrollment of siblings, um, for students who have siblings at CCPS, they can be automatically enrolled at the school. Cottonwood Classical has a vibrant arts program Starting in sixth grade and then going on through seventh grade, students take a semester of art and a semester of guitar. In eighth grade, students have the ability to take a drama class or an additional guitar class. And in high school, our students take the IB arts classes, um, which can include a visual arts class, um, a music class, or a drama class. Um, our students are taught using um, artistic behavior protocol. And so with that, students um, are analyzing their own art and the work of other people, as well as creating art. Welcome to the gym. This is the home of our physical education program. We have PE in grades six, seven, and nine. And this is also where we do a lot of our after-school practices for athletics. During the day, you can also sometimes find a large gathering in here for a grade level meeting or division meeting, and we proctor our IB exams every May in this space. In the near future, when the phase one edition is complete, 
We hope to turn this into a cafeteria, which we're all really excited about. Here I'm standing in front of the lockers for both middle school and also high school students. In their lockers, they can store textbooks related to math and science. For our middle school students, the curriculum that they use for math and science aligns with state standards, but the curriculum also helps them uh, prepare for a highly rigorous IB um, math and science program. In our IB science program, we have courses that deals with physics, biology, and also ESS as well. For our math program, we have AI and also AA, standard level and also high level. Students have two lunch periods at Cottonwood Classical. There's a middle school lunch period and a high school lunch period. Students' um, families can order lunch from our PTO. They can order from restaurants such as Chick-fil-A, Dion's, and Twister's, and they pick up their food at this window. If students choose to bring their food from home, there's access to refrigerators and microwaves. So I'm currently sitting in our cafeteria um, beside the mural that acknowledges our previous time when our school was housed at the Unser Museum. Um, we are going to have this current cafeteria become the library um, when phase one of construction is um, completed. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our school's behavioral program and it's called the IB Learner Profile Traits. And there are several traits that we work very hard to develop in our students. Um, traits such as becoming excellent thinkers, becoming knowledgeable, becoming caring, open-minded, principled. Um, these traits we acknowledge as the best way that we can behave um, as people, and we want that for our students at Cottonwood. Right now I'm standing inside the nurse's office where students can come during the day if they feel sick. Adjacent to the nurse's office is the rapid response room, which serves as a place where students can be isolated when a nurse is helping out with another student. In compliance with uh, the COVID safety protocol, each part of our building has an atomizer that allows fresh air to come in. Every room that we have allows air to be changed uh, at least five times per hour. And also, the filters that we use currently are comparable with the filters that are used in hospitals. I'm standing here in what we call our senior lounge to talk to you about humanities and world languages at Cottonwood Classical. So for world languages, students take Spanish every year in grades 8, 9, and 10, and then in 11th and 12th grade, as part of the IB diploma program, they can select to take two more years of Spanish and graduate relatively fluent in the language, or they can switch over to French and gain some competency and confidence in a second or really third language. In the humanities, Cottonwood is proud to be among the top schools in the state every year for English language arts standards on the state accountability test. And when students reach 11th and 12th grade, they get to select from options such as philosophy, psychology, world history, and environmental systems and societies. Finally, uh, as also part of the 11th and 12th grade IB core program, students take something called theory of knowledge, which is an epistemological view of knowledge and how we know what we know. It's a really wonderful course to reflect on all that they've learned in their time at Cottonwood and prepare themselves cognitively for what is to come at college. In addition to being an international baccalaureate world school, one of the amazing things about Cottonwood Classical Preparatory School is our Paideia Pedagogy. It's a key part of our mission and it informs everything we do in the classroom. Essentially, there are three components. There's the didactic component to teaching, which is lecture, and that's meant to take up as little time as possible. The other two areas are intellectual coaching and seminars, which many of our students lovingly call Socratics, because there can be a Socratic style to a seminar. As you can see here uh, in a seminar, students are sitting around the table with the teacher and they're discussing openly interpretive questions and providing evidence from the text. It's a really amazing thing to behold and it's part of what helps our students grow as citizens of their school and of the world. Here at the end of the video, I wanted to share some recognition we've rece received recently. U.S. News rated us as one of the top 250 high schools in the country among all publicly funded schools, which is really a, a wonderful achievement for us. 
In addition, Niche.com rated us as the number one charter school in all of New Mexico for middle school and for high school. In addition to all of the phenomenal teachers that we have here and our dedicated students, parent support has been a big part of our success. So we welcome you to learn more about our parent groups on the website and hope that when, you jo when your student joins us that you really join us as well. Thanks for making it all the way through this video. We hope to meet you in person soon.